I have headphones pinching on my ears, so I'm going al fresco or whatever the word is. <laughs> <laughs> al dente? <laughs> boy oh. boy that was oh, quite a break summer, fall yeah. break fall apple season something yeah so how, how did that when, when are we planning for this to go out let's let's pretend that 2020 yeah <laughs> 2030 2030 <laughs> happy 2030 <laughs> we made it <laughs> been doing this show for 11 years <laughs> the asteroid is only 60 years away now and right oh man i can't wait <laughs> oh, boy it's gonna be good <laughs> i've got, got half of the bunker built and <laughs> yep you got plenty of time to finish so we got a show today our first show in the new season right and a topic that's been at the top of our list maybe it sounds harshly i'm going to word it but it's when stakeholders dictate research methods and dictates a little bit of a loaded word i realize that we can address that. we could say mandate we could say <laughs> i like to say in, try to influence influence <laughs> uh or or really what it is often is they they come to it having experienced one way of doing something and say that's the way we're going to do it here's a question for you as we get into this when you've experienced this what are the methods that you are being presented with that they're trying to use by and large the the thing that comes the the most is focus groups, right? Followed by, uh, oh, follow the second second one is basically what it's requested is sort of usability testing, but not really. It's basically, hey, could you come and sit in the employee lounge, and if anybody's got time, just ask them what they think. Interesting. So it's kind of this. And you know there'll there'll be some artifacts, so it's sort of this weird mix of usability testing and intercepts on a population that is never going to use the thing that's being built. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and it's like you know, mm -hmm. well, we've got all these people wasting time eating lunch. Let's get their feedback. <laughs> Let's interrupt their lunch and get. <laughs> yeah. So those those are the two for me. What was what did you think I was going to say for my number two? So I hear number surveys. one focus groups obviously focus group for sure, followed by for me surveys. Oh, surveys. Let's, yeah. let's do a survey. Not that surveys are always bad. Again, we've talked about that previously, but yeah. I, I feel to your initial point is what are people most familiar with? Yeah. Non-researchers yeah, usually. Right. Surveys. Um, because they, they've taken surveys or, or, or they come from a marketing, marketing background. I'm running into that. Not because not that it's an issue, but on two current projects, the, that was the initial <laughs> approach. That it, hey, so we want to run some surveys. <laughs> right. Okay. And again, not mandating, but right. This is, this is just as opposed to the ask of, we would like to talk to our customers in some fashion about this thing we're thinking about doing or that we've done, right. please guide us. They come and they say, Hey, we would like to buy some focus groups or we would like to buy a <laughs> survey. Right. For me, the survey doesn't come up quite as often. Okay. And I'm really glad of that because surveys are really difficult to get anything good out of. Not that people don't do it well. Like if you're trying to, to elicit information that's beyond, you know, how do you feel about our brand? Even if you've got that reasonably robust, it still doesn't take into consideration if the person reads something else into your question that you didn't intend. And if you're in person, you could potentially be like, oh, they didn't quite get where I was going or or maybe what they took away from what I asked is better than what I was trying to ask. Lead down a whole survey episode, which <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, backing up. No, <laughs> I, mean, I, I I agree with you. Yeah, I was going to share a, a quote that a very close friend of mine says about surveys. And surveys are a really easy way to get bad data. <laughs> surveys are hard, but but again, people often come and they say, "Hey, so we want to get a survey. We want to get some data, or in your case, they want to do some intercepts." or they want to run focus groups. So let's talk about techniques or tactics for redirecting. Potentially you can say, well, no, we don't do that here. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. And good day, sir. Good day, oh, sir. <laughs> no, I don't want work. Goodbye. Right. Right. I just mimed hanging up a phone, like right. a corded phone, like who, 
Um, the kids don't know what that is. <laughs> millennials killing corded <laughs> phones, <laughs> right? And rotary phones. The the thing that works best for me, and it and I will say it does not work all the time, is really saying like, what are you hoping to get out of your, and I don't necessarily say it like this, but your quest for information. Like, what are you trying to achieve? We can do X, Y, and Z. You know, there's there are a lot of different methods we could apply to get information. Not all of them are appropriate, and that works okay because then they they talk themselves it is usually the first time that they're voicing what they're trying to achieve and why they chose focus groups and i kind of let them talk themselves out of it right doesn't always work but yeah yeah that's a good point yeah i feel like a lot of times and i i kind of use the same tactic where i just ask them which i do regardless of whether they're kind of trying to guide me to a, a method or not but start with you know, the basic questions of what are you trying to learn, like you were saying, yeah. and who do you want to learn it from? And what are you going to do with that information? All those, all those kind of baseline questions. And a lot of times they don't even know the answers to those questions, <laughs> which is a good way to also kind of reset the conversation. Like, okay, let's, let's kind of start over. Let's take a step back and really think about the proper way to do this. Fortunately, I've been lucky with some of my clients where they, they might come into it with an approach, but they recognize that they're hiring, you know, an outside firm and they're not necessarily the experts. And so they do defer and want to have that conversation. I feel like, and I've heard from people who work in house where they don't have that luxury of pushing back as much, or the people that they work with are a little more forceful. They don't feel like they have the authority right. to push back on those types of conversations, which is unfortunate. I think the same tactics can be true. I mean, this comes back to communication and negotiation, understanding the other person's background and what yeah. are their goals and motivations. And you have yours and having that conversation and just kind of making your point. And sometimes you don't win. Sometimes you don't get your point across. It's weird to me, weird and also not weird that us as the outside consultant coming in and, and them as the internal researcher or designer who's capable of, of doing research, who may have the same level of expertise as us mm -hmm. but the power dynamic with the stakeholder that's asking the question or making the request is so different when you're internal yeah. even though it's like for us we're like well i have to either come to an agreement to do something else or i have to do what they want in order to get a job or get a project that gets me money we being brought in as the expert regardless of what what triggered bringing us in we have a lot more power to say, hey, let's not do that idea. Let's do this idea for X, Y, and Z and, and often get, oh, okay, we'll, we'll try that. And yeah, and I don't mean in any way to downgrade the abilities of- No, 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 no. yeah. Perfectly or more capable than we are because um, <laughs> they know the domain and you know, they know right. the background in a lot of cases. But yeah, there's, like you said, a power dynamic, which is unfortunate where they're kind of going up against maybe a product manager or director who's been there for longer than they have or whatever. They get paid more money. They have a bigger office. They feel like they have, they know everything. And yeah, there's not a good way. They can't just say no to a project like we could as outside consultants. Like if we get that vibe from a client, like, okay, this might not be a good match. But when you're internal, you don't have that kind of power unless you're just going to quit, which... Right. Or, you know, I mean, this, this comes back down to uh, the whole politics issue, you know, your ability to negotiate. We start with a more equal power dynamic, I think, being external. But I think as an internal person, you still have, it depends on the company you're at, you still have the opportunity to have a conversation with someone and say, what outcomes are you trying to achieve? Look to other projects that have, have gathered information and say, hey, look, we did this in, in three weeks or two weeks. We did it in a sprint or whatever. And we got this good data. And we did this other project that was like what you're requesting. And we got, eh, it was okay data, but we weren't really confident about whatever the, the purpose was. In a healthy company culture, regardless whether the researcher and the product person or whoever, they're brand new, they're young, they're older, they've got experience or they're inexperienced, there should be a mutual respect from each side as recognizing the experience that the other side is bringing into that conversation. And I feel like that's the missing ingredient in a lot of those cases. 
not to harp on culture and all that kind of stuff and kind of be your off topic. <laughs> oh, we can harp on culture. <laughs> but yeah, I know. But I think that that's part of it. I'll also throw in that they're always done. I want to, not that's always, but with the best intentions. Like, I don't think anyone's trying to sabotage research, obviously, and get bad data. They're just right. uninformed or yeah. less informed than maybe they should be. Again, deferring to the researcher who should be well informed. <laughs> Yeah. to make the appropriate recommendations. You tell me what you want, and I'll tell you that skywriting a survey mm. <laughs> and having people use Nerf darts to choose their you know, <laughs> That's a great idea. Classic method. Nobody yeah. uses it anymore. Right. For, I mean, it's expensive, and it doesn't work. But it's a lot of fun. But it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Might get you on the news. To me, one of the, one of the potential decision points of especially if you're internal, like, I don't think this works so much as an external, unless you, you really think you can establish a, a long-term relationship with the client, particularly for internal people. It may be an opportunity to say, okay, let's do that survey. I'm going to bring you along on this journey with me. And I'm going to run this project as transparently for you as possible. So that you see what goes into it, what we come up with and what the outcome is. And then we can have a retrospective at the end together. You know, I, as the researcher could say, oh, well, you know, we got some good data out of this, but you know, we've got a, a ton of rows in the spreadsheet that we have no idea what to do with because we just couldn't um, get that level of, uh, of insight from, from what we were asking. And right. um, we could have done that if we were talking to people directly. And that's, I think, part of that conversation up front is here, here's my preferred method or my recommended method to do it this other way, there are risks. And that's usually a word that gets people's attention. And I like to use it maybe a little bit of a scare tactic, but not really, because they're true. It's like, there are risks inherent with this method that you're recommending right. and here's what they are. You know, the, the method I'm going to recommend instead of the one you want, here are the risks with that too. You yep. know, yep. it's I'm not just... like, hey, your idea is dumb and we shouldn't do it. It's, that's not the optimal way to get the information you want. Always a good conversation to have, to call it out. Even if you're recommending something and it might not be perfect to explain why it might not work. Yeah. So almost to have a, a rubric <laughs> of method. That word again, Matthew. I know. Burr. Well, I mean, it's because, you know, I'm talking with someone this week about coming up with not literally a chart or a rubric, but basically a hey, I need to do X and I have these constraints, what are the best methods to go forward with to help a team better understand, you know, what choices they should be making or negotiating for or planning for ahead of time to have the resources just to help help a team make better decisions about how to approach research. You know, so we're going to go through and, and talk about their current state and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things we're going to talk about and even before we decided to to talk about this topic, I wrote politics, you know, what are the political constraints going to be? Who are the people who are intransigent about decision making? And they're, they're like, No, I'm, I'm dictating. <laughs> I'm not, you know, back to the the top of the show where we said dictating, because there's sometimes there are people who are like, this is what you're going to do. Right. Boo, boo them. Yeah, jerks. Yeah, you walk into a doctor's office. This is what you're going to do. You're like, right. Oh, okay. Right. Take not that, that we're, spleen, not that we're as cool as as <laughs> doctors, but you know, yeah. it's like it's going to the expert and saying, "Hey, expert, let me tell you what you're going to do." Respecting each other's roles and professions. So, one of the things I wanted to to note, and I think we touched on it a little bit, uh, is it's not just the the stakeholders that you're talking to who are making these requests that you then have to maneuver to to a better outcome it's also um, building up those advocates internally absolutely finding an internal support system yeah to help you get what you want basically but that understands what you're trying to get done is super yeah. helpful whether it's your boss whether it's like you said someone else just in another department that gets it for me this feels more like a internals only kind of thing but do the survey you know, and, and then maybe also in your own time, if you've got time, do some interviews as well, run parallel methods for the same topic and the same user group or. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hate to advocate that, but I had the same thought is sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and just try it and yeah. it might not work. 
Right. And then you can explain, well, we talked about the risks and this is what happened, but we can get maybe some data out of this, mm-hmm. but we can get more better data if we just do another round or parallel round or right. some other method to get better data. Right. Or if the opportunity is there, do a survey. And in that survey, you're collecting, hey, would you be willing to talk with us one-on-one about blah, blah, blah? And then reaching out to those people to have a more in-depth conversation about, hey, when you answer B. Yeah, that's become a standard question. All the surveys that I do now is yeah. just to collect that. Even if I don't plan on doing follow-up research, right. it, it helps my clients build that repository, so to speak, of, of willing. People, yeah, people who are interested. Yeah. yeah. The big thing to do, especially if you don't want to be completely aggravated throughout your entire career, is if you end up having to do the survey or having to do the focus group or having to sit in the employee lunchroom and (laughs) ask questions that they don't care about, you're going to have to do more work, but it's in pursuit of teaching the people you're working with. There are better ways to gather the information for better outcomes. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time. And thanks for watching. (laughs) You can say thanks for watching twice. Did I say it twice? Yes. (laughs) All right. Good show, people. Good show.